Our goal in this video is to go over terminology and an important theorem relating to minimum values and maximum values for surfaces, functions on two variables. If you look in the YouTube description or in our Moodle course, you'll see a link to a GeoGebra app where I've graphed z equals 3x minus x cubed minus 2y squared plus y to the fourth. And it's a good idea before proceeding with the rest of the video to go on and get that GeoGebra app open because I'll reference certain points on that graph as examples of the definitions that we're going to go over. To start off, let f of xy be defined on a region R containing the point a comma b. The z value, f of a comma b, is a local maximum of f of f if f of a comma b is greater than or equal to f of xy for all xy in an open disk centered at a comma b. So the idea is that you look at a small region in the domain, just some open disk around a point, and if you just look at the z values over that disk, the point you're looking at will look like it's at the top of a hill. In our GeoGebra app, if you look at point A, it'll look similar to the diagram I've drawn there, where if you look at an open disk in the domain just under that point, centered at the point in the domain that maps to point A, point A is a local max. It looks like it's sitting at the top of a hill. Just like that, f of a comma b is called a local minimum of f if that z value, f of a comma b, is less than or equal to f of xy for every single xy in an open disk centered at a comma b. So the, the similar idea, you take a disk in the domain and here, if you look at all of the z values, you get a low point. And here I'm picturing some z values above the xy plane. I could also imagine them under, and I could move this point around to where the xy plane was either above or below. But if you look at the GeoGebra app, both points E and F are local minimum values. And if you look just a little bit more closely, you can see these are definitely local mins and maxes because different places on the graph go lower or higher than that, but restricting to these very small disks, we get the mountain peaks and then the kind of upside down mountain peaks that become our local mins. So the same, it's a very similar thought process to what we saw in Calc 1. In Calc 1, we called something an absolute maximum value if, excuse me, a local maximum value if we could just look at a small part of the domain and make it look like the top of a mountain and we call something a local minimum value if we could reduce to a small part of the domain and make it look like uh, a valley. So same ideas here for us. Another idea similar to what we had in Calc 1 is the first derivative test for local extreme values. If f of xy has a local maximum or minimum at an interior point of its domain and the first partials exist there, then the partial with respect to x at AB and the partial with respect to y at AB are identically zero. Now, another way to think about this claim is I'm at a point A comma B, both partials are equal to zero. This means the gradient vector at AB is the zero vector. So another way to write this test is that if I have a local max or a min and the first partials exist, then the gradient vector is equal to zero. We could say, and the gradient vector exists, then it has to be the zero vector. Well, what this really tells me is that if I'm traveling a path and that gradient exists, then I have a horizontal tangent line along that path and it doesn't matter what path I take even a path like this that wouldn't be a partial with respect to x or y would be a directional derivative. Well, if your gradient vector is the zero vector, to calculate a directional derivative, that's a dot product with a unit vector. Well, the dot product of the zero vector with any other vector is zero, giving me this idea of a horizontal tangent plane at that point. And the same argument holds if I have a local minimum that as I travel paths through that local minimum, my gradient vector is always zero, the zero vector, and therefore my, I have a horizontal tangent plane at that point. 
definition here at the bottom of the board, an interior point of the domain where both fx and fy are zero or where one or both do not exist is a critical point of f. And this is a very familiar sounding definition of critical point in calc one. Those are places where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. For us, there are places where the gradient vector is zero or where the gradient doesn't exist. Now this is written very specifically that one or both of our first partials doesn't exist. Well, if one or both doesn't exist, then the gradient vector doesn't exist. So the first derivative test for local extreme values and this definition of critical point really talking about the gradient vector. Okay, one more definition. We have talked about local mins, local mins, and local maxes. There is one more possibility. A differentiable function, f of x, y, has a saddle point at a critical point, a comma b, if in every open disk centered at a, b, there are x comma y's, there are points, so that f of x, y is larger than f of a, b, and their points so that f of x, y is smaller than a, b. What this is really saying is that there are points in the domain, excuse me, if I'm at a set of point, what this is saying is that there are paths that go through that point where some of the paths make it look like a local min and other paths make it look like a local max, right? If I'm going with points that behave like this, it's making this point look like a max. If I have points that behave like this, it's making this point look like a min. So we have one example of that. If I think about our hyperbolic paraboloid, z equals x squared minus y squared, there's a saddle point right here at the origin. And to view that, you can just imagine going down this path where the origin assuredly looks like a local minimum. On this path, it's actually an absolute minimum. And then you could imagine coming up this path. Both of these are parabolas, and my setup point just happens to be at the vertex where it would look like an absolute maximum. So if I imagined a disk in the domain, every point on this path satisfies the inequality. F of x, y is less than F of zero, zero. And all of the points on this path in that disk satisfy this inequality. Every open disk centered at that point would contain a little bit of this path and a little bit of that path, so we will have satisfied this definition. Now, one important thing to note, when I talk about absolute, excuse me, when I talk about local maximum and minimums, the local maximum and minimums occur at a point in the domain and are a z value, right? So if someone says find the local maximum, I'd be giving you a z value and telling you it happened at an x comma y. When someone asks me for a saddle point, I owe them an ordered triple. It's a point on the surface itself. A comma b are the x and y coordinates from the critical point, and then I'd need to find the z coordinate. By plugging that a comma b into my function. So, on my hyperbolic paraboloid, the critical point is zero, zero. And then the saddle point is zero, 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 the ordered triple. 